If you're planning on claiming the solar tax credit in 2023, then the time to get started for your project is right now because we have to complete this entire process until your system is placed in service. Now in today's video, I'm gonna be explaining what happens after the solar sales process and all the steps leading up to a fully completed, fully functional solar installation. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and for the past 11 years I've been helping families achieve energy independence using clean renewable energy. Now if you're new to the Solar Surge channel, on Solar Surge we do product reviews of solar panels, inverters, batteries, as well as provide short educational videos about the process of going solar. And so in today's video I'm going to be explaining why now is the time to make a decision and get the process started if your goal is to be able to collect the tax credit in this year, in 2023. Now, for those of you who are actively in the solar sales process, a lot of that's gonna involve interviewing contractors and soliciting bids, reviewing proposals. But once you decide to actually start the solar project and sign the paperwork, that's when the installation process kicks off. Now, everything starts here with the on-site survey. Now the purpose of the on-site survey is to make sure that everything that was designed during the sales process, which in many cases is going to be on computer-based designs, but to make sure that everything that was designed during the sales process is actually going to fit in the real world where we want it to fit. And so this usually involves having a technician come out from the local installation office. Uh, in many cases it means getting on the roof, taking direct measurements of the roof, um, also taking measurements of the clearances around electrical panels, electric meters, uh, taking the cover off the electric uh, panel so that we can see how many spaces uh, are available if we have to add new circuits or to make sure that if we have to do any junctions inside the electrical panel that there's adequate space for that. But, but basically the idea here is to make sure that everything that was designed and sold is actually going to be able to be installed when it comes to installation day. Uh, and there's going to be a pretty detailed report that the site surveyor will collect and compile. Um, some site surveyors I know will take over a hundred photographs of just different various aspects of the property, again, to make sure that we have a super clear picture of what we're working with so there are no surprises on installation day. All right, I hope you're getting some great value from today's video content. If you're a solar sales professional out there, or maybe you're considering starting a career in solar sales coming in from another industry, then I'd like to invite you to Solar Surge University. Solar Surge University is the premier online training program for aspiring solar sales professionals who, who really want to be professionals. Learn how to sell solar at an expert level with a consultative approach. It's the same approach that I use and that we use here at Solar Surge to do over $700,000 a month in solar sales virtually with no advertising budget. So if you'd like to separate yourself from the pack of undereducated, underperforming solar salespeople, check out Solar Surge University, where you can learn all of our expert techniques and for a limited time, have access to my live sales call recordings with some of my live clients. So again, we invite you to check out Solar Surge University. The link will be below here. And we're also offering a 14 day, no risk money back guarantee. Now, once the site survey is complete, three parallel processes kick off. Along the top here, you have the engineering and permitting process. In the middle section here, you have the utility interconnection process. And then for some homeowners, if you're in a uh, homeowners association, you may have to do a homeowners association approval as well. So let's talk about engineering and permitting first. Now, when we're doing a solar installation, it's like doing any other addition on the house. We have to pull an electrical permit, and in many cases, we have to pull the building permit as well. Now, before we can apply for those permits, we actually have to have a set of engineered plans. And what the engineered plans are, are detailed plans of exactly what equipment is being installed and how it's being installed, you know, down to the level of detail of where each roof attachment point is going to be. Uh, and the reason for that is that we have to prove that the method in which we're going to install the solar system is going to meet the necessary wind, snow load, 
uh, and static load rating of the building, right? So it's, it's just like building an addition on the home. And so the professional engineer will take the initial design that the solar uh, salesperson put together and then turn that into a fully detailed engineer plan set. Now once we have those plan sets, then we can go to the local authority having jurisdiction and apply for permits. You're going to hear that term authority having jurisdiction or AHJ. Basically it means your local government, whether you're in a city, county, township, but wherever you go to the local building office where the building inspector and, and the, the zoning people are, that's where we're going to apply for our permits. Now also while that's going on, we have to do a similar filing with the utility company. The utility company similarly wants to know exactly what equipment we're going to be installing. They want to know how it's going to be installed. And they want to make sure that all the equipment has the proper listings for interconnectivity with the electric grid. So it's a similar document set to what we send to the, the uh, AHJ for permits. We're going to send that to the utility company for our interconnection application. And then finally, for those of you who are in a homeowners association, uh, there might be a architectural modification form or something like that where you're going to be doing an addition on the house. So we want to make sure that we get that paperwork completed and filed as well before we can issue the installa uh, installation date. Now, once we have approvals in all three areas, that's when we can actually set an installation date. And in some cases, we'll actually deliver the solar equipment to your home. Uh, maybe two or three days prior to the actual installation crew arriving. Some installers do it all the same day where the installation crew brings all the equipment with them. Some installers will have your equipment drop shipped so it's there on site ready to go and then the installation crew will come a couple of days later. By the way, don't worry for you homeowners out there, don't worry about if, if any of that material is lost or damaged you are not liable for it. It's, that's not your property until the project closes out. So if anything is lost with an advanced shipment of materials, it's the installer's responsibility uh, to repair or replace that equipment. Okay, so now we're at install day. Now we can kick off up to three different parallel processes. You're gonna have the roof crew that does the solar array mounting on the rooftop. Um, you're gonna have the electrical crew that does the inverter hookup. Now, if this is a micro-inverter based system where the inverters are actually on the rooftop underneath the panels, then it'll be the same roof crew that does the inverter hookup as well. However, there still is always going to be a final interconnection that happens at ground level. So whether you're connecting a central inverter, making your, your, your inverter to utility interconnect, or in a micro-inverter system, you're generally going to connect your, your end-phase combiner to your, your utility interconnect. In other words, all the microinverters uh, output is going to be aggregated into one single circuit that is then interconnected with the utility. So the electrical crew will be doing that. And then if you're doing a battery backup system, you could have a separate team that is like the battery team. Uh, and you know, installing solar with batteries, it doesn't it involve a lot of complexities. There's different settings you have to program and different nuances. So there could be a dedicated battery team that's just focusing on that part of the installation. But once all of these different components are complete, then the building inspector will come out. Again, this is from the AHJ, your local government, they're gonna have a building inspector, is going to come out and make sure that what was installed actually matches what the plans that were approved back here during the permitting process, okay? And then once the inspections pass, then the utility is given uh, notification so that they can activate bi-directional metering. So they're gonna give you what's called a PTO, which stands for permission to operate, which is when you can actually fully energize the system, power your house, and receive credits for any uh, solar power that you send back to utility. So folks, this has been a brief presentation of the solar installation process. This entire process, depending on where you are and who the installer is, this entire process could take 60 to up to 120 days. And so that's why if your goal is to get the solar tax credit for 2023, the time to decide on your equipment, decide on your installer, and get the process started is right now. Now, of course, if you're in the process of interviewing installers or getting price quotes, if you need to get a price quote or if you need to get a comparison quote, as always, you can feel free to reach out to us on the link below there. It'll allow you to set up a quick Zoom call with me or one of our experts here and we'd be happy to provide some pricing and some information for you. Um, as always, guys, if you're getting good value from the videos here on Solar Surge, make sure to give us a thumbs up. 
Uh, and also go back and watch some of the other solar surge videos because again, if you're in this process of, of looking at solar options for your home, you're gonna find we have reviews of all the top brands of solar panels, batteries, uh, inverters, and different other equipment that you might want to include in the system. Well, folks, I thank you for spending some more time with Solar Surge today. As always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.